Andrew McCart, IFL TV. I'm here in Liverpool at the No Limits Boxing Gym. With me, I've got Kevin the Jago. Kevin, you're an honorary scouser now. How long have you been in the city now? Just over a year now, so yeah, I'm a, I'm a bit of a scouse. Sometimes the, the scouse accent kicks in. <laughs> you do a little bit. No, no, not on camera. <laughs> Listen, uh, let's just jump straight into the deep end before we talk about why we're here at the No Limit Boxing Gym. Troy, Woy Troy Williamson, um, a, a fight that you've been asking for, a fight that you need, you need at this point in your career, um, in your home city of Belfast. It's uh, that whole fight card for me is one I need to be at because uh, it's just got 50-50 fights up and down it, which is fantastic. But like I said to you, Troy Williamson, he's been in probably two fight of the year contests with Ted Cheeseman and all them guys. So talk to me about this fight. How excited are you? Yeah, I'm massively excited. You know what I mean? It's the platform and type of fight that I've been calling for that I've wanted. Do you know what I mean? I'm in boxing for these big, big fights, memorable nights, and like you said, it's back home in Belfast, um, on home soil, and I'm. I'm over the moon to be back and back, uh, be fighting back home. I haven't fought there since 2019. I've only fought there once as a pro. So, listen, yeah, this is a massive fight for me. Um, I know what Troy brings to the table, and I'm ready for the step up. So, yeah, I've, I've been calling for fights like this. Don't believe everything that you see on social media, um, because I got a lot of stick and slate for comments that were made on social media. But I know within myself and my team knows that I've never turned down a fight. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited for this uh, for this fight, for this show. It's a massive show, and it's an honour to be on a show like this. Do you know what I mean? You've you've got some 50-50 fights, and um, I'm looking forward to a massive night and, and hopefully steal the show. Well, I think that's the thing. Steal the show when you've got your sort of style, the way you approach the game. You have sort of that hands-down style, but you can bang as well. You've got that one-punch knockout power. You've seen your hurt guys with just a check left hook and a solid right hand. Troy Williamson... As tough as old boots, like I said, he's been in these fight of the year contenders. So he's been in the fight of the year with Ted Cheeseman, most likely. So he's been in them fights. He knows how to put on a show. You know how to put on a show. Mix them two together. We're in for a great treat. Oh, well, in for a great treat. Listen, as much as I felt like Troy disrespected me on social media for no reason, um, he's a good fighter. I know what he brings to the table. Um, I won't have to go looking, Troy, and it's going to make for an exciting fight. I think our, our styles will gel well together and. I think everyone's in for a great night of boxing. What can we expect from you then? I mean, we've done numerous interviews, Gibbon, and it's been your dream to headline in Belfast. You're not headlining, but you've got a huge fight on a huge card in your home city of Belfast. So what can we expect from you in this fight? This has to be my best performance to date, especially against someone like Troy, who's dangerous. Um, I feel like this is the first step towards headlining shows in Belfast. This is my opportunity to go out, out and show everyone how good I am and, and make people believe that I can, I can sell out arenas in Belfast, do you know what I mean? I, I've done unbelievable tickets already um, for this show, and which is unbelievable because I'm so thankful the, the Irish fans support me and everyone coming across the water support me. But yeah, I think this has to be the best keeping the jock on the night um, to beat Troy Williamson, and that's what you'll get. I've, honestly, Andy, I know everyone says it, but you can go and ask my coaches. Sometimes they like to call me a lazy bastard, but everyone in the gym... I turn around and goes, I've got to give you a juice, you've, you've really been working hard and I'm working harder than ever, I'm, I'm looking at this as my coming out fight, this is the fight that's going to get everyone to stand up and say, wow, Kevin Ajako is, is special, my coaches be telling me in the gym that I'm special and you're working hard and if you do that on the night everyone's in for a treat, so I'm looking, I want to go out, steal a show, make a statement, I want to knock Troy Williamson out, it's as simple as that, um, so I, yeah, I think this is going to be the best Kevin Ajako. <laughs> Excuse me. The thing is as well is obviously that 154 pound division right now is hot and you, you beating or even putting in on that that class performance where you do stop somebody like Troy Williamson, the only way is up Kevin. there's no backward steps, there's no more journeymen, it's all 10 rounders, 12 rounders against guys with winning records, high knockout ratios highly, probably out in the States maybe, maybe even a Josh Kelly here in the UK, dangerous dangerous fighters that that are 50-50 fights from here on out, are you ready for that? Without doubt. Look at my record, I fought three journeymen. Every single other person has had a winning record. Now, I'm not saying that the, at the level of the guys that you're, you're talking about, but I've always wanted step-ups. I fought people 14-0, 18-1, 28-4, 20, do you know what I mean? I've, I've had them, them learning fights at a, at a good level. With fighters, Matic, who went out and gave Anthony Fowler a close fight, Danny Dignam a close fight, I beat him by every single round. Same as Larios uh, Jr., he went out and uh, had a split decision loss against one of the top American kids. So if you look at the, the fighters that I've, I've fought, they ain't no pushovers, they're not no journeymen, but 
yeah, the names that you you've mentioned and the, the level that you've you've mentioned, that's what I want to be at. You know, I'm not inboxing to. I want to be retired. I've told you this before. I want to be retired at 31, 32. I want to be out of this sport. I'm 26 now, so I've only got six years in the sport to achieve what I want to achieve. The first Black Harris World Champion. So I need them fights. I need I need to go out and put a massive performance on December 2nd and then push on to to. I want to fight at European level because I don't think you can skip levels in boxing. Pick up a European title and then move on to World Honours. Is JJ Metcalf fighting for that? Is he 154 as well, JJ? JJ. He's fighting for the EBU title. Well, there's a prospect for that, is there not? You, you, I'm, I'm telling you, there's a prospect for that. I'm sure, yes, there is. No more than me then, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was just off the track with JJ there, so um, he did say that he might have fake news coming soon. Hopefully he does, because he's, he's training hard. But, yeah, well, if, if he has prospects for that, then uh, I'll have to wait. But JJ deserves it. He's IBO world champion, and um, he's coming to the end of his career, so he deserves the big fights. Definitely. Well, like I said to you, man, first Black Irish World Champion before, and what, you're talking five years. If that doesn't happen, but in today's day and age with the strength and conditioning and the nutrition that you guys take on, if that doesn't happen by then, I'm sure it will, Kevin, that you know me, but if it doesn't happen and you're willing to stay on and to, to go into your late, mid-30s to get that dream if it doesn't happen as soon as you think it does? Hopefully I don't have to think about that. I, I, I've been boxing since I was seven. I'm 27 next month, at the end of next month. It'll be 20 years boxing at... I've never done this for money. I've always done it. Obviously, the money comes with it. I've always done boxing because I want to achieve what I want to achieve and, and be a great Irish fighter and the first black Irish world champion. So I don't want to fight into my late 30s, but if I get an opportunity in my late 30s that I, to achieve what I want to achieve, then I will do. Yeah, I think so. Let's talk about the world level then. How far are you away from that? Beating Troy Williamson puts you that up there. Do you know what I mean? Troy Williams probably... He's, he's up there at good level, European level at least, definitely. And he's won that British title. He's fought good names, like I've said, in the, especially in the, here in the UK. But Charlo looks like he's probably going to... I don't know if he's going to hover around. So then world titles are going to become fragmented. They're going to get split. You're probably two, three fights maybe away, do you think, from winning the, uh, fighting for a world title? I think I was ranked at middleweight and light middle with a WBA, number 10. I think I'm ranked number 11 in the world, or in Europe. So one or two big wins puts me right up there and if them belts scatter then I want to be in a position in all the governing bodies to, to challenge for a world title so it's, it's not that far away say two years I could be world champion so uh, that's what I'm, I'm aiming towards anyway do you know what I mean I want to be world champion I've always said I want to be world champion before I'm 28 I've got a year and a bit to achieve that and then defend it for a couple of years maybe move up weight capture another weight retire <laughs> they are a happy man listen not, to me not to say that I'm thinking about my retirement do you know what I mean I'm I'm a dedicated boxer. This boxing's been my life for a very long time, but I also think of the future as well. Do you know what I mean? I, I look at what's my plans after boxing. I don't want to be in this for my for a long time. Like I said, I don't do it for money, so I don't want to be boxing into my late 30s, 40s and putting damage in your body, do you know what I mean? Damage in your brain. So um, I'm not thinking about retirement. I'm fully focused on fighting, but that is my plans. Listen, ones of you, you, uh, you get that Belfast gig, right? World title fight in Belfast. I don't know. When, I don't know where it will be in a big stadium in, in Casement, uh, Park. Casement Park right you get that the buzz you win a world title the fans are going nuts it's a lovely summer's night do you know what I mean the buzz you get from that you wouldn't run away you wouldn't retire you want another one and another one and another one I want to do what Carl Frampton did and, and bring big massive nights back to, to Belfast and memorable nights you know what I mean so I, I used to what, go to all of Carl Frampton's fights so yeah I want to leave a, a legacy for myself the first black ass world champion and and repay the fans so I've got so many fans that travel across the water to watch me all the time two three hundred um, of people and I just want to be able to go, go back and get back to them and to give them big nights well, I want to touch on one last one for me before we get we get going here because look at that gym behind me there's about 100 people in there Kevin um, the gym that you're in though Rotunda you Gary Cully Josh Taylor Aston Brown JJ Metcalf Jack Jack Turner Shannon Courtney I'll probably miss somebody Darren Till do you know what I mean? I've rattled off some very, very... Liam Smith. Liam Smith. How can I forget Liam? Do you know what I mean? Liam Smith. I mean, what a absolute phenomenal gym to be a part of. When you look at there, you've got your undisputed champions, world champions, two great world champions. You've got Cam Smith that dips in and out as well in there. You've got prospects coming through. You've got yourself, Frankie Stringer, Frankie Stringer as well, young Frankie, lightweight. Um, I mean, f I mean, you must be buzzing. It must be a happy gym. The, the, the morale in that gym must be absolutely on fire right now. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable, do you know what I mean? And everyone's got fight dates now as well. You, it makes you want to push yourself even more. At any stage in, in the gym, at any day, if someone's slacking, they get found out because everyone else who's working hard will... The yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll call you on it, do you know what I mean? I'll not name names, but someone didn't come on the track tonight and in the group chat... Wait, wait, no, 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 no. Name names. No, I can't do that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that to him, but 
He didn't come to the track tonight and he's been getting slated in the group chat for it. So people like that want to push you on and make you, you work harder. And I think it's definitely benefited me and helped me move, move my mind to that next level, knowing what I have to do to achieve my dreams and, and be the first Black Irish World Champion, do you know what I mean? Seeing people there's undisputed and some unified in the in the in the camp, do you know what I mean? People like that, they make, they make you want to be at that level. So uh, you got to raise your game. So it's, it's unbelievable to be training with people like them. And it's a credit to Declan and, and Joe because it just shows how good they are as, as coaches. Definitely, I echo that. I've seen them firsthand, how good they are and what they do with their fighters. But listen, plenty more media here for you, Kevin. Like I said, I don't know what you've got here because there's about 100 kids in here. So I don't know what you've got planned to do in here. But listen, good to see you again. I know that will catch you throughout the week as well. So thanks very much, mate. Make sure you're in Belfast December 2nd. I'll be there, don't you worry about that. Cheers, Kevin.